let's see the differentiation of metanephric blastema. Previously, we have seen the differentiation of uh, the ureteric bed or the metanephric diverticulum. So now let's see the differentiation of metanephric blastema. So the end of each collecting tubules induce clusters of cells within the metanephrogenic blastema to form small metanephric vesicles. Actually, we have seen earlier that uh, the uh, collecting ducts or the collecting tubules are derived from the differentiation of metanephric diverticulum. So they penetrate the metanephric blastema and they start to induce the mesenchymal cells within the uh, metanephrogenic blastema to form small metanephric vesicles. As you can see, these are the vesicles or clusters of cells. This formation of clusters of cells within the metanephrogenic blastema is induced by the collecting tubules, which are the, ten, the terminal branching of the metanephric diverticulum. So later on, these uh, metanephric vesicles, they elongate and they undergo different changes and they become the metanephric tubules. As you can see, this is the metanephric tubules. They become elongated and they undergo different changes and they eventually become the, metanephr met the metanephric tubules. And the proximal end of these tubules, these metanephric tubules, as you can see, these are the tubules, okay? These are the metanephric tubules. And the end of these metanephric tubules is invaginated by it is invaginated by the glomeruli. Here is the glomeruli. It is the capillary tap in which filtration occurs. So, due to this, it, the, it, this glomeruli um, invaginates the end of the metanephric tubules. And the invaginated uh, part of the metanephric tubules is called the Bowman's capsule. We call this part the Bowman's capsule. Here is the Bowman's capsule. So the capillary tuft or the glomeruli will lie on this part, on this invaginated part, which also is known as the Bowman's capsule. So filtration occurs through this. The urine formate will follow this path and eventually it will be collecting the collecting tubules and then through the minor and major calyces it will be exit out of the body so these metanephric tubules also differentiate into the proximal and the distal convoluted tube here is the proximal convoluted tubules these are the distal convoluted tubules and here is the uh, descending part of the loop of Henle and the ascending part of the loop of Henle and uh, this is the distal convoluted tubule and uh, then here is the collecting tubules so these two all derived from the metanephric blastema the proximal convoluted tubule the loop of Henle the distal convoluted tubule are derived from the metanephric blastema whereas the collecting tubule is derived from the metanephric diverticulum or the ureteric bed uh, and together with the glomeruli and all the uh, parts of the nephrons together are called the nephrons they constitute the nephrons each distal completed tubule it contacts with an arched collecting tubules and then the tubules become confluent as you can see here these are the tubules and these are the, uh, the collecting duct and they become in contact with one another and then they become continuous and they become confluent one thing we should know 
about the differentiation of the methanephric blastema and uh, the differentiation of the methanephric diverticulum is that it, they reciprocally induce each other. The differentiation of the methanephric blastema depends on the induction by the methanephric diverticulum. And as well, the differentiation of the methanephric diverticulum depends on induction by the methanephrogenic blastema. So we call this kind of induction reciprocal induction. So without one another, one cannot develop. If there is no methanephric blastema, we are not going to find the minor, the major calyces and the collecting tubules because they are induced by the methanephric blastema. At the same time, if there is no ureteric bed or, or if there is no methanephric diverticulum, then we are not going to find the nephron. The nephrons are not going to develop because they are induced or stimulated by the methanephric diverticulum. So we call this kind of induction reciprocal induction. All right. So now let's see the ascent of the kidney. Initially, the kidney used to lie close to each other in the pelvic cavity. They used to lie in the pelvic cavity, closer to each other. Then as the time goes by, they gradually come to lie within the abdomen and they uh, stay apart from one another in the abdomen. So the relative ascent or positional change of the kidney is mainly due to the growth of the caudal part of the embryo which is caudal to the kidneys. As the caudal part of the embryo grows away from the kidney, the kidney moves upward or it ascends. So the hilum of the kidney initially used to face ventrally. The hilum means it is the part of the kidney where the vasculatures, the nerves, and also even the ureter enter into the kidney or exit from the kidney. It is the part or the entrance way of those structures. So this hilum of the kidney initially used to lie ventrally, but then it starts to rotate medially about 90 degree and then it, it attains its original or a fixed adult uh, position so it usually lies anteromedially so in adult kidney the hilum faces anteromedially it's directed anteromedially but during uh, embryological development it's used to lie ventrally so the kidney attains their fixed their original or their adult position by the ninth week so when we see the changes in blood supply of the kidneys, as the kidney changes their position or as they ascend apart, as they move apart to attain their original position, they receive their blood supply from different sources. Usually they receive their blood supply from the vessels that are closer to them, okay? Initially, the renal arteries are branches of the common iliac arteries. When the kidneys were in the pelvic uh, cavity, they received their blood supply from the common iliac arteries. As we can see on this picture, here is the common iliac artery and here is our kidney. As you can see, these are the kidneys and they used to lie in the pelvis, so they receive their blood supply from the common iliac artery. So, and then later, as the kidney ascends upward, they start to get or receive their blood from the distal end of the aorta. Here, as you can see in this picture, as the kidney ascends upward, they start to get or receive their blood from 
the distal part of the aorta. This is the aorta. These are the renal arteries, and they start to receive their blood supply from the distal end of the aorta. And the vessels that used to arise from the common iliac artery now it degenerates. It becomes involuted. And when they are located at higher level, they receive their branch from the abdominal aorta. And normally the caudal branches, they undergo involution and they disappear as you can see here. Now, the, the, as the kidney attains its original position, it starts to receive their blood supply from the abdominal aorta. The vessels below this are involuted or degenerated. That is all for today, guys. And I thank you for watching. If you like this video, please, please give it a like. And if you wish to see more videos in the future, please subscribe and hit the bell button.